Hello, and welcome to Michael and Jeff's Diary Adventures Through Boston, or MJDATB for short. That's right, Jeff and I managed to miss two deadlines for what is arguably one of the easiest assignments of our college career because of our non-motivation to write even a single paragraph of text. So, in our desperate attempt to make up for our late work, we are creating a flashy video diary presentation to hopefully distract you from our inevitably failing homework grades. We will take you through a journey across our stretch of Boston, show you the sights, meet the people, maybe even learn a thing or two about Boston along the way. So, join us for MJDATB. Actually, can we do Jeff and Michael's diary adventures instead? It rolls off the tongue more. No, me, I said this. I wanted to. You know, I told you, you I want to do this. Wh- I said I want to do it. It rolls off the tongue better. I'm telling you, it rolls off the tongue better. I'm fine. Fine. Jeff and Michael's Diary Adventures Through Boston. J M D A T B. See? Oh my god. Dude, were you crying? No. Shut up. No. But we, we, we figured it out. We just gotta, we gotta make a video. Make a video and then send it to our professor and Wait, what do about Boston what? shit. About what? what? What do you mean, Boston shit? What do you mean? What is the video gonna be about? You didn't think of what it... I... You didn't think what we should... I don't know. You didn't think about what we'd... Fuck. Wait, 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 hold on, hold on. Let me... Wh- let me... Let me go to my email. Because, you know, I got I got a little feedback from the professor. There we go. Hey, sorry, I just saw your text. Hello. What's up? Hey, what's up, man? Hey, how you doing? Hey, what's up, man? We're here to shoot our thing. Here, we're not wearing a mask. Get away from me. Okay, jeez. And we're off on our journey. But uh, Michael decided to change his jacket because he felt self-conscious. Where are we going? We're going to stop off at Beacon Street. Uh, then we're going to go into the Boston Commons and probably go into North End. Good job. Yeah. I'm sweaty. And so, Jeff and I embarked on our perilous journey to explore Boston's coffee culture and what makes it so vibrant. Our first stop was Beacon Street, to a prominent coffee shop known as Cafe Landwer, opened in 2018, just around the time Jeff and I started going to BU. What do you want? You know, I'm eyeing down this, you know, very traditional uh, coffee here. This is the first um, Israeli brand uh, coffee house uh, in the United States. It was uh, brought here to Boston in 2018, which was pretty recent. Uh, I wonder why they didn't come sooner. Uh, It seems like a pretty cool place. We're gonna get a very traditional uh, uh, Nutella uh, latte. Nutella. Nutella. The Nutella latte is really good. While finding a place to sit and drink our traditional Nutella lattes, we discovered a tea shop right next to the cafe. Jeff and I chalked this up to the ongoing tea versus coffee war in Boston, which we will cover in depth later in the video. So here we have a uh, Nutella uh, latte. Uh-huh. Um, I'm not quite sure what's in it, so uh, here we go. What does it taste like? You know, it tastes like nuts. You know, I think that's why they call it a Nutella. You know, Nutella must mean full of nuts. All right, Jeff. It's hot. It's hot. After finishing our delicious Nutella lattes, Jeff and I headed for the tea for our next stop, Boston Commons. Oh, shit! Oh, shit! Oh, shit. Oh. While waiting at the tea, however, I had an epiphany that I wanted to share with Jeff. So, uh, Cafe Landwer was actually, uh, the, is actually right now the second largest uh, roaster of coffee in Israel. Um, they started out in Berlin in 1919, and then through a whole bunch of, like, 
you know, uh, passing of power in the company, uh, eventually ended up in Israel, and now they have over 60 locations there. And they opened up their first one in Canada in 2017, and now the first one in America is Boston's in 2018. And you know, it, it's really interesting. I wonder why they decided to make Boston the first place to receive their brand. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, I think it's interesting, like why Boston? You know, they could have picked Seattle where Starbucks was made, or they could, pick, could have picked New York where all the trends are. Why, why here? Why here? Maybe because it's cheap? Maybe, you know, but I think, I think there's another reason. And you know, I think it's because there's sort of this coffee culture in Boston. Jeff and I were intrigued by the idea of a Boston coffee culture. So, being the stupid student tourist that we are, we decided to do what any stupid tourist would do. Ask the locals. However, as Boston University students, we have a responsibility to make sure we do not do anything that might spread the coronavirus. So, in order to keep our interviews safe and socially distanced, we had to improvise. Yeah. Do you guys like coffee? I actually don't like coffee. Oh, that's a shame. I know. Yeah. <laughs> right. so, in your opinion, do you have an opinion on coffee? Uh, you have a strong opinion on coffee. Oh, wow. <laughs> Very in favor of. Very in favor. Oh, of coffee. Yes. Yeah. yeah. I like it when coffee doesn't taste like coffee. When it tastes like coffee ice cream. That's I see. when I like coffee. What do you think about coffee in Boston? I've only had Dunkin' Donuts in Boston when I'm from around here, but um, yeah, it's pretty good. Uh, have you seen a lot of coffee houses in, Bo in Boston? Um, a lot of Dunkin' Donuts. Lots of Dunkin' Donuts. Yeah, we get that a lot. Um, yes. I feel like if I'm gonna get an iced coffee, I'm gonna go to like a Starbucks or a Dunkin'. What do you think about coffee? What was interesting about these interviews was how the Boston residents seemed to have better taste in coffee houses than the non-residents. We got some top spots. Yeah. Tate. Yeah, is, Tate. Is a pretty good one. Um, Others. Ooh, I love thinking cup. Oh. It's all about the cappuccino for me, so like that's not for me. I'm here for the iced coffee. What are you? What are you iced got? coffee. Iced um, coffee. I live in Cambridge, so personally love Curio coffee. They do it good. Have you seen a lot of coffee shops in Boston? What do you think about them? Um, I have not seen a lot of coffee shops in Boston. After the interviews, we decided to head for lunch. On our way there, however, we stumbled upon a very relevant statue. Uh, so this right here, I'm going to pronounce his name incredibly incorrectly, probably. His name is Kushkushko. I think he's like uh, Polish or Russian or something. Uh, probably Russian. Uh, I have to look that up again. But um, one of the things that he was credited for was being a general in the Continental Army. Um, he was also really close friends with uh, Thomas Jefferson. They shared a lot of political beliefs. Uh, unlike Thomas Jefferson, though, um, after he died in, I believe, 1890, he uh, donated a lot of his uh, funds to uh, abolishing slavery, which is, you know, pretty cool, dude. Uh, so why are we talking about this random guy relating to Thomas Jefferson? Well, as we all know, Thomas Jefferson wrote the Declaration of Independence, um, very instrumental in our revolution, and Thomas Jefferson was also quoted with saying, uh, coffee is the drink of the civilized world. Now, why would Thomas Jefferson say that? And not only that, but what does coffee have anything to do with the revolution in Boston? You know, I think this is where a lot of Boston coffee culture comes from. After saying goodbye to the statue, we decided to stop at Earl of Sandwich to grab lunch, and appropriately segueing into our next topic, I got the 1762 sandwich, late 1700s, Revolutionary America. So what I got here is a, uh, a sandwich from Earl of Sandwich. Uh, it's in this... Uh, uh, British uh, logo here. A lot of people in the Revolutionary probably wouldn't like that very much. Because, uh, uh, little known fact, uh, British people were the enemies. Uh, but anyways, um, so this, this particular sandwich is actually called the 1762. Um, and around that era was um, the same time that we got uh, the first coffee house in America. Correction. The first coffee selling license was officially licensed in 1670, making that America's first coffee house. However, the late 1700s were still a very instrumental time for coffee in Boston. Because of the increasing presence of British soldiers in America enforcing very unpopular laws such as the Tea Act, tea became a symbol of the British, and therefore was despised by revolutionaries, such as Thomas Jefferson. As tea-hating became the trend in the colonies, 
coffee loving began. Coffee began replacing alcoholic beverages as the official morning beverage, and eventually, tea hate became super mainstream as a result of the Boston Tea Party. Even today, tea haters still roam the Boston streets. What do you, what do you say to all the like, coffee haters? Oh. They just don't understand. Yeah. Yeah. Like, are they tea drinkers because it's worse? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we don't like that. We don't like After finishing our very delicious lunch, we decided to make a special stop for a special friend. So this is the uh, George Howell Coffee House. Uh, it's pretty popular around the United States. Uh, it's one in Boston. And the reason we're here is because our professor's last name is Howell. On our way to our final destination, we ran into what I thought was the site of the Boston Massacre, my favorite revolutionary historical event. But it was actually just a random building next to a Shake Shack. We soon realized our mistake and found the real site of the Boston Massacre, with the BU mascot in front of it no less. However, we also figured out that this wasn't actually the site of the Boston Massacre. It was only after finding a literal seal on the ground calling itself the site of the Boston Massacre that we knew we were in the right place. After the Boston Massacre, we ran into some vibrant Boston street life. They tried to solicit money from us, to which they were successful. Finally, after passing what is confusingly called the White Bowl Tavern, we made it to our final destination, the Green Dragon Tavern after what I assume is an, another array of colored animal taverns. This right here is the Green Dragon Tavern, uh, not to be mistaked with the White Bull Tavern, which is, you know, also named after a color and an animal for some reason. Uh, so what's really special about this particular tavern is uh, you can see the years on there, and you can see the little trademarks that Headquarters of the Revolution. Uh, the reason why it's called that is because this tavern is accredited to having a basement where a lot of revolutionary plans were made, uh, apparently, so that's pretty interesting. Another thing is uh, this is also accredited for being a planning place for the Boston Tea Party. That's really cool. Uh, while we were talking about coffee and stuff like that, this used to uh, serve a lot of coffee. This used to be a coffee house in addition to uh, being a tavern. After a long day of drinking and learning about coffee, we decided to make like coffee and tea. You know, on a serious note, you know, I think what I learned is that, like, you know, it's really interesting to see the small things that will bind people together, you know? Like, whether it's a cup of coffee, or a movement, or a person, you know? It's, it's just, it's interesting to see how communities form around these things that we all mutually enjoy. It sort of makes us human. And, you know, I also learned that there's a lot of nuts in Nutella latte. I learned that a lot of people like coffee even though I don't really like coffee. Lord knows this took us a long time to make. But in the end, not only did it get us out of our house during a pandemic, but it also allowed us to explore some of the hidden gems Boston has to offer. And we cannot wait to see what Boston has in store for us next. I'm Michael Holasnik. And I'm Jeffrey Bloom. Thanks, Thanks for, for watching. watching.